good. And then when you get there, you always want to put your jack stands down. Make sure you got solid footing in the ground. Just and just put a little pressure on the jack stands on front and back so that you're you're insured not to go back into the lake. So you want to just hook it up. Just grab the hose. Lock it in. The other ones, this is a suction hose that goes on the back. It's in the lake out there. And then this is the return line over here for discharge. And some are easier than others to get on. There, that's it. And the hose is up. Then we need to go in and undo the latch for the priming hole. And right in there, and we put a couple five gallon buckets, usually about four five gallon buckets of water in there. I need to get the water. About four to four and a half of these five gallon buckets of water. There we go. This is full full. You, usually you just have to get above the, the suction tube over there. And that's usually all it'll take. And then you just put the, the little latch back down. And this you don't really have to tighten down too tight. But you just put some pressure on there. We usually take crescent wrench and just put a little extra force so that no air is getting through the gasket. That's all there is to priming it. So right here there's a sight glass for your oil. You just want to make sure that it's in between those two sight glasses for that. And then before you start it, always make sure and check your engine oil. Dipstick, make sure you're good to go on the engine oil. And coolant for your radiator. Make sure those are all good to go. There's a um, water separator for your fuel fuel filter. So at the end of the season or before the season when you're getting things ready, just check it. Make sure there's no dirty chunks or water in there. And Nope, uh, there's a port for a fuel gauge if you want to put a fuel gauge in, but you can just look straight down in the fuel tank. You can see the fuel level through the top. This will run about 20 hours or so, and it's about, I want to say, I don't know if it was 30 gallon tank or, I'd have to check the specs on that. And then, I guess after that we're on to starting the engine. And just make sure the throttle cable is mostly all the way down to start. Start. This is the throttle cable, so as you pull this throttle cable out, you'll increase the the um, RPM of your engine. And you can also do it by the lever too. And then once you're there, you turn this to lock it in place. And lock it in. But when you start it, you want it pretty low. Push it all the way in. Good to go. And then you just turn the key switch to the on position and the glow plug light will turn on. And if your engine's already been started or ran, you can start it immediately. But if it's cold, wait for the light to go off. And then it's good to go to start. And if you wait for a while and you don't start it, after a while it'll time out and give you a warning that it wasn't started. It'll give you a low oil pressure warning because you waited too long. And once you're going, you're good to go, then pull it up. And usually you want to stick around 2,000 RPM. You can go up to 2,500, but we recommend staying around somewhere 2,000, 2,200 RPM.
connecting, you just need a pry bar or a, something to release it. There you go. Yep, then it released all the pressure and just trains it all out of there. And then the same thing for the other one. Problem. You can refuel them while they're running. It won't mess anything up. The when if you ran it out of fuel, the you'll come back and this will be flashing with an exclamation point in the oil, low oil filter fuel pressure because it lost fuel pressure because it ran out of fuel. So you would turn to the off position. That will clear the the air. Put it back into the on position, and it'll start the fuel the lift pump. This is after you filled it with fuel again. This will start the lift pump. You loosen this thumb screw all the way out. So it's like that. Then you let it pump and you might want to let it pump for two cycles to get it to go through all the way. And then once you let it go for two cycles, turn the key to the start it. Let it run for up to a minute without the, or with it open. It'll run fine. Then come over and close it all the way down and you're good to go. And, um, if it's your, you know, if your efficiency starts going down, you're freewheeling, and then you'll notice you have to reprime it a lot before it gets going. So just check the rubber gasket on the cam locks, make sure they're sealed off properly. It, and it'll just, you know, if you, you want to catch it, if you run your suction line out of the water, you want to be able to catch it before you burn up your pump with no water going through there. But other than that, nothing too much will happen. Um, Yep. Yep. You'd have to do the whole thing over. You can check, you know, you could check in here, see if there's still water. If there's still water filled up in there, you're good, but most likely it's pumped it all out. You'll have to reprime it and start over. Yeah. No. Always keep it closed once you start it. <laughs> don't, don't prime while you're running. <laughs> And this is just like at the end of the season or if it's starting to freeze at night and you want to get the pump or the water out of your pump. Yes, there's a drain plug back here. And that'll drain all the water out of your pump.